Hello and welcome to another episode of Motors for the Masses. And what is our new indoor studio for doing product reviews and things like that? And this is a video of exciting gadgets, shall we say. And, and, listen. Not a siren in sight or in earshot. And not a, a van revving in the background. And not a faint hum of boy zone or whatever it is they're playing in the background. <laughs> yes. So, for now, let's roll the intro and get cracking. Drink some tea. Crack. <laughs> So our first thing we want to mention is why these two mugs are here. One of them is going off to Gloucestershire and I apologise, I did promise to send that last week and I'm sorry I haven't sent it, you know who you are. Um, it is on its way. Um, the postman failed to pick it up. Bloody liar. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's been really busy. The second one is for our little competition thing we had. Um, we had a picture of a variator actually off an LML scooter from 2013 and it was a little round thing with uh, white rollers in it and it was basically what was it wrong answers only please a couple of people did struggle with the concept of yeah, they didn't wrong give answers only. Um, but the, uh, the the one we have chosen a winner and <laughs> we've had some fantastic responses loads of people have written in on Instagram and on Facebook and thank you very much for everyone for participating some of the ones we want to mention. Um, Paps O'Callaghan, thank you very much. Individual testicle warmer. You have small balls for that one. But anyway. <laughs> but you don't get a true sense of scale, do you, in a photograph? No, also want to say thank you to Tom Drew. It's a Costa Variator Transversal. It spins at 4,000 RPM and transversely separates the caffeinated coffee from the decaffeinated coffee. Mm. Uh, Peter Turner, it's a prosthetic eye display unit. It slowly rotates so you can select the correct size and then you just need to choose colour for the iris. <laughs> Indeed. Fair play. Um, Tony Watson, thank you very much. Yes, it's certainly a universal translator. Converts Suffolk into English. Never really need that. Nothing wrong with my English and I'm from Suffolk. Stroke Norfolk. Mm. You're not. No. Anyway, um, lots of others, lots of others, so many here, so many here. Um, I quite like that one, uh, a giant boob nipple cannon. <laughs> yeah. Um, a steering wheel off a 1982 Honda Civic. Thank you, Simon Birch and Luke Jenkinson for the previous comment. Um, oh, this Evans. one, Chris Evans. Yes, a butt massager rotates and massage your buttocks while driving. Indeed, I'm sure it does. Um, we're coming back to that one because that's our favourite. Um, 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 a couple of correct answers there. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, well done, Damien. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. So oh, the oh, look, winner, the wife. Oh, egg warmer plus candle holder. Not my, not my wife. His no, wife. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the winner is Mark Taylor, and that is a Daleks Mentina. Can't say that word. <laughs> I spelled Dalek wrong. <laughs> yeah, Dalek has an R in it. But never mind, we understand. So, Mark Taylor, please send us a private message with your address and that will be off to you. Right, let's get on with some serious stuff now. Mm. Why did Chaffin Gloucester need a, a mug? Uh, because he um, commented on something I did um, a while ago oh. and I said I'd send him a mug and yeah. uh, I apologise, I haven't sent it yet. It is on its way, I'm really sorry. So, our first product is... Ooh. This. Come in for a closer look. So what is our first product? It is an Oxford Solarizer. It's a solar powered battery charger. It works in any light from minus 20 to plus 70 degrees Celsius. It's got a 2.8 meter cable as well. Mm. However, does it work? Well, the price of this is 39.99. So it's comparable to a lot of chargers, to be honest. Mm. Um, here's one I prepared earlier in a Blue Peter styly. So in the packet you get staples, be careful of those because they will cut you. You get your solar panel. It's not massive. It's actually quite 
small, but um, you could stick that to a window in your shed or something, or in your garage, or it works under any light. The blue light shows that it's working, so it's working under these fluorescent lights. How comes, cool is that? It comes with the suckers. It does. You slot in. Um, you also get your crocodile clips to go onto the battery, and if you want to hardwire it into your bike, you've also got the uh, two connectors and the plug end. And presumably, if you've got a car with a very small battery, or a motorbike with a USB stroke 12 volt supply. Yeah. Because they do have them. Oh, a sticker for your window. Brilliant. With a toolbox. Yes. Yeah, toolbox sticker. So, let's find out if it actually does it. We do have a battery here, which is somewhat discharged. It does appear to be working on just the lights in here. You can see the light doing. Just said that. Did you? Yeah. Oh, excellent. Right, so with the multimeter, we shall test how much is on this battery. What does it say? It says. It says that's red and that's black. You're the wrong way around. Makes no difference. Doesn't it works it? both ways. Oh, okay, all right. But I'll change it just for you. There Thank we you. Go. What have we got? 10.4. 10.4. Right, okay. So when you put the multimeter on, it also draws it's power. Still going down. Still goes it? down. 1028? Yeah, near enough. 227. 27, 26. Yeah, see? Right, oh. so what I'm going to do is put this in the window. Well, we know it's on about 10.2 ish. So if we perhaps put it on charge for a bit, talk about something else and come back to it. All and right. bearing in mind that out there, it's, it's a bit very dingy. dingy. Yeah. But it's got light. So we have now put it on the windowsill. All right, we're going to put that on there and come back to it in a little while. So that is $39.99. So, on to our next product. Well, that is Ooh. this, and this is a tracker. Now, why do you need a tracker on your bike? Malcolm, tell them why they need a tracker on their bike. Um, because it's a good way of finding said bike if it gets stolen. Exactly. And it doesn't have to be on an expensive bike. Now, we are fitting one of these on a £1,500 scooter simply because um, the boy is 16 years old. It's his first bike. He's got to travel to and from school. And his mum wants to know, one, where the bike is and one, where he is. So she can track his sneaky, whereabouts. Sneaky, yeah. sneaky. But he's really pleased about that. Yeah. <laughs> However, it is a really good tool if you want to find out where your bike is. Keep an eye on your bike because you also get an app to download and you can find out where the bike is at any one point, um, what direction it's going, if it moves, if it yeah, does you, that. You can, you can set up a geofence, which means you can set a, an area of coordinates. Your bike's in the middle of it and if it moves outside of that fence, it will alert your phone. And, and what's the minimum distance of that geo coordinate? That I do not know, but you can probably set it fairly small, like 10 metres or something, because they're, they're quite accurate, these GPS things. They are, so. yes. OK, so what's the cost of this? Well, this is £199 for the product. And then you have a subscription. It gets a little bit cheaper the more you have it, but one year subscription is £130, and then 200 and something for two years and something else for three. Mm. Yeah, so basically, that's your product there. Now, this is quite a neat little thing. It should be fitted, I have to add, by an authorised yes. fitter now, who has done a course to, to do it. Malcolm and our other mechanic has uh, done a course. It's a really easy course. It's basically something you do online to learn how to fit these. Um, you can only get access to that course if you become an authorised tracker dealer. It's not like anyone can do that. Anyone can go online and figure out how to disconnect them. You have to be able to be approved by Tracker to be a Tracker fitter. So there you go. Comes with a say, little Tracker unit. And where could they put that, Malcolm? Um, where would it usually go? It needs to. Don't, not... don't tell them. It's a secret. Well, it is, but there are only there's small stipulations about the fact that it has to be able to receive GPS and a GSM signal. Right. So we'll go as far as that, and that's it. Okay. But there you go. So yes, all you do is connect that, download the app, and um, away you go. Pay your subscription and get your little um, SIM card unit. Which is a little slot in there. SIM card's already in this one, because it's ready to go. And that's it. That is a cool little gadget. Hmm. Now, if you're spending £15,000 on a superbike, 300 quid is not a lot of money to spend. It's nothing, is it? 
you know, for knowing where your bike is at any one time. And it's small enough to lose that no one will know it's even on there. And if your bike does move, you'll know straight away on your phone app, as long as your phone's charged. I'll tell you what else it can do. Um, if you are riding your bike and you drop it, it will send a signal to the um, emergency services or whoever you've got set up in your um, contacts. Fantastic. So if the bike drops on its side, it will immediately send a thing, even if you're riding it. Fantastic. Yeah, good. Now, I'm going to be fitting one of these. No, I'm not. Malcolm's going to be fitting one of these on my Triumph because he's an approved fitter now. Um, so I'm going to be getting one of these myself because I think it's fantastic. I know my Triumph isn't a mega expensive bike, but I like it and it's a bit special. So things that are a bit special tend to be a bit nickable. Mm. So there you go. That's our next product. If you have a tracker, let us know. What brand do you have? Are you pleased with it? Does it work? How much do you pay for your tracker? Is it something you recommend? Please let us know in the comments below what you think about this. At this point, I'm going to say I am aware that there are super cheap ones that you can get on eBay and Amazon. And I did try one of these on my car. And Is that a little round thing? No, no it's, a, it's a square thing like this. And it literally drained a full-size car battery in about four days. Really? It took so much power that you have to use the car every day, otherwise there's no point having it. Wow. That's not a waste good. of time. Right, our next product. And we are going on to a lock. Ooh. Now, before we go on to our next product, the lock, we shall bring in the battery. I shall place here. Disconnecting first? Nope, leave it on. All right, let's see, what, uh, see what's happening here. So we were getting 10.28, remember? Yeah, 10.28. It's only been the... a few minutes. Yeah, it's been like five, hasn't it, or something like that. 10.7. 10.7, .7, so it's definitely charging. It's making a charge. And that's only been a few minutes. Yeah. So, you know, it does work. Yeah, and that's with... Can they even see the window? Not really. It is cloudy and rainy outside. Yeah, and all I've done is just stuck that up against the window. Yeah, so... So, there you go. Good product. Up. Actually yeah. works really well. I might actually get one of those. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. To get me shed window. Excellent. So let's right. take that off Next. for now. Next, we are getting all lockified. Ooh, lockified. Yes. There now, this is the lock in question. Looks like a disc lock. Of course it does. That's because that's what it is. However, this one has an alarm, but it also has something else. So this comes with a bunch of keys. Ooh. The, um, the bit to remind you you've got a disc lock, they're, they're quite essential because the amount of people that I think have locked these to their bike and then ridden off not realising they've got a lock to their Ooh, bike. That's gonna hurt. Yeah, these are quite handy. So you just hook it on or put that through there as you put the lock on and then hook that to your handlebars just that's to remind you you've got a lock. It's just called a it. reminder, isn't it? That is, that's it. it is. Yeah. And then it comes with... It's a USB cable. Yes. Why is that, I hear you ask? That's because this is USB chargeable. Ah. Yes, so... Uh-oh. Yeah. You just lock it like so. Probably needs to set. Oh, there we go. Right, now it's set, sorry. It's quite ear piercing, isn't it? Oh, they've just started to do the siren. It's just, gonna, it's just about to do the <laughs> wee 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 wee. So we, um, we got rid of that beforehand. So there you go, there it is, the Alpha Alarm XA14 by Oxford, and that is $74.99. Very sturdy. You've got a nice, massive, thick um, locking mechanism stroke uh, bolt in there. That's definitely... 35 millimetres. 35 millimetres. That's the, the bolt, and then you've got a 7 mil gap. That's a nice, chunky one. So, mm. you can get cheaper ones, but, of course, they're not USB chargeable, and you have to keep changing the batteries when the batteries die out, and then you have to take it apart. And So, how do you charge it? Well, it comes with this allen key and in there is the allen key slot and you just undo it take off that cover and charge it up there you go brilliant that's pretty impressive i've got a disc lock um which does have an alarm but uh, when the battery dies you've then got to get those little watch batteries four of them to put in oh really yeah it's a real pain it's a bit awkward, isn't it? yeah so having a usb chargeable one is pretty cool 74.99 Hmm. It's got a 14 mil locking pin, 110 decibels. That's quite loud. And it's rechargeable. 110 decibels. 
Well, hopefully it detracts people from trying to pinch your bike. Yeah. I'm feeling a little bit tired. <laughs> Do you need a blanket? No, that's the segue onto our, our next product. Yeah. Do you need a blanket? Oh, be in. Yeah. Do you need a blanket? Oh, I, yes, I, I do. <laughs> Sorry, I have some tyre blankets. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> right, yes, yeah, so these are tyre warmers. <laughs> Sorry. These come in a bag, which Rangy, also Rangy comes in a bag. Goodbye. Now, these aren't just... A lot of people think tyre warmers, they're... <laughs> just for track use, surely? Well, quite often, yes, they are. But they don't have to be just for track use. Now, this comes with a little digital display, like so, so you can see the temperature on them, um, and a, a medium, low and high output, depending how fast you want to heat your tyres up and for how long. Um, what we need now is a tyre. Three settings. 60, 80, and 95 degrees. I can get a tyre. Here's one I prepared earlier. All right, this is a Pirelli Diablo 200. Now, the significance of it being a 200 is that this is the limit for these. Not many bikes have a 200. Most of them, super bikes are 180 or 190, let's be honest. Um, so we are going to test this out. Um, what we need is a plug. There's one right there. Right, brilliant. All you do is roll it round. So put that in. I think you put it over the top, didn't you? No, put it in. And then pull that over the top, like so. To you. To you. To you. To you. There. No. Little cosy blanket for a tyre. And then Velcro it. Yeah. So it has, obviously, that digital display to tell you your temperature. It yeah. also has in here a neon display to tell you that it's on. You have three settings, what Mark said. 60 degrees, just gonna check the piece of paper. 80 degrees and 95 degrees. Okay, plug that in. Oh. How long is the wire? Oh, not particularly, but you got it? Yeah, that's about a metre and a half. Yeah, a metre and a half wire. If you've, you've got an roll extension. Roll it around the touch, that's fine. Yeah, there we go. And on. There we go, so now our neon so what have we got on the display there? The neon thing is on, it says 17.2 degrees currently. Okay. What, so, what number did you put it on? I uh, just left it on medium, I think. Uh, let's put it on high just for fun. There All right, go. let's do that. Let's get hot tyres. Yeah. Now, what's the advantage of having one of these in your personal garage? Well, the nice thing is that you can warm your tyres up before you go out. Exactly, you especially haven't got to spend a... 20 minutes weaving down the dual carriageway. Yeah. Especially if it's a cool day and you want to get some heat into tyres before you leave rather yeah. than having to mess around and if you've got junctions and roundabouts straight away. It's, uh... Or if you want a nice ride to work. Oh, I feel like getting warm. Oh, yeah. If you want a nice ride to work without worrying about riding to work on cold tyres, someone like Malcolm or myself, we're less than 15 minutes away from our homes. So, of course, cool, definitely getting warm. Um, if we want to ride to work and we want to ride with a bit of fun, and I don't mean dangerously, but taking corners properly rather than ooh, dodgily, mm. then we can if we've got these on because our tyres are already warm, therefore are going to be a little bit stickier on corners yeah, rather nice. than trying to get heat into them because by the time we get to work, we haven't even got enough heat in the tyres. No. So I, I think I'm going to get one of these for my garage. I won't bother. No? No. Why is that? I'll just get sticky tyres. You do take corners too slowly anyway. I do, but that's because I don't trust my tyres. Your chicken's just about that wide. No, they're not. <laughs> mine, are, mine are there. I'm there now. But it's getting hotter. I'll still get closer. It's that, that thing he's reading 17.8 at this point, but you can physically feel it's getting warm. Definitely. I mean, yes. Not, not inside the tyre yet, but certainly on the outside. So how much are they, Malcolm? I have absolutely no idea. No 199 idea. pounds. So 200 quid, 100 pound a tyre. This particular set will do 120 mil to 200 mil tyres. I think there's different sizes, isn't there? There's three different options. Yes, um, and we have got a tyre out the back there, a 240 tyre. Mm. Um, that <laughs> wouldn't fit on this. So 120 is the thinnest one. On so this, you can't do push bike tyres, not that you take corners very... <laughs> I don't know, them, them beach bikes with all the big fat tyres on, they're about 120, aren't they? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Huge. 
Also, it says it has a 17-inch diameter. What, as maximum? For the, the real rim size, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which most super bikes are. Let's be honest, if you've got a, an adventure-style bike, you're not really going to be putting tyre warmers on it, are you? Probably not, yeah. No. So these are mostly <laughs> for the super bike market or the sports bike market, sports tourer, that sort of thing. Yeah. So there you go, a set of tyre warmers. Now, these are some nice gadgets for the man at Christmas who already has everything. Get him a set of tyre warmers. Mm. Or woman, sorry. In this, yeah. Women like riding sports bikes fast. Absolutely. In a safe and controlled manner. In the world we live in with... Uh... Gender neutrality. No, 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 no. Um, environment and stuff. We should talk about power consumption. Oh, right, go on then. So, if you just use the front, it says 400 watts, which is quite a lot. Yeah. The rear one is 600 watts, and the pair, obviously, is 1,000 watts. So you're talking a kilowatt to warm up your tyres for however long it takes to warm up. Actually, I can feel that already. Oh, yeah. So the inside of the tyre is now hot Hosty. and warm. So, probably, what, 20 minutes? Oh, these are nice. Got them on for 20 minutes or something. Yeah. So it's not going to use a great deal of power, is it? No. And if you put it on low setting, you can put them around your shoulders and watch you're watching TV at night. <laughs> Save on your, your heating at home. I don't think We I don't can. recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not something you should do. And don't put it in your bed to warm your bed up either. No. So okay. That's it. Fantastic. So there you go. Set of tyre warmers for 200 quid. What does it say now? Like them. That was up to 19.3 on the outside. Fantastic. Right. Next product. Our next product is a JMP battery monitor. Two. Indeed. What does it do? Monitors monitor your battery. battery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have a look, shall we? Yeah. So what you get in here is the actual battery monitor that you basically wire up to your battery. It's really simple. Yeah. Negative, and positive, done. How does it monitor the battery, Malcolm? You can install. Well, you need to install an app on your phone. It works on both um, iPhones and and Google Play. Other. Yeah. I installed it on my phone. It actually installed really quickly. It's mm. a very small app. It installed instantly. And the second we connected it, it recognised the battery, charge, the unit thing, recognised it, and then started monitoring it and telling me how many volts we had. It was fantastic. Pretty impressive. Yeah, so there it is now. Look, it's monitoring the background. It's come up on here as a, with a notification. So we opened this. And there you go, instantly. 7.8 no, 7.94 volts. So, what do we get? 7.7 7 .7 7 .7 volts. 7.93 volts. Charge mm. soon. Okay. Yeah, I think my battery's pretty much had it. Yeah, so basically, <laughs> um, if you charge that battery, it will monitor it all the time. And whilst you are riding, Ooh. 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 Um, now on here you can do a voltage check, you can do a cranking test, you can do a charge test and you can do a trip monitor. So you can monitor what your battery is doing on a trip. So what we're going to do, yeah, he's going to put the charger on and see if the voltage goes up. Eight volts, 8.16, 8.24, 8.28, 8.29. It's charging it. Look at that. Yeah. We should have done it this way around before. <laughs> no, 8.3. Yes, I'm impressed. I really am impressed. Yeah. So, charging. Just I mean, do a charging test. So, oh, no, we can't. Start engine, turn off any devices which use power, yeah. and then turn on turn on headlights. Uh, I think that's like... Because that's what you normally... Charge yeah. off or whatever, yeah. Okay. Fly load. So there you go. That's a fantastic thing. And that is £39.98. And it saves you, especially if you've got a lot of plastics and an awkward battery to get to, which, if you remember, on my FB Mondial, you have to pretty much take the tank off. Yeah. Um, it's a fantastic gadget because you can just have that on all the time and connect it to your phone, and there you go. Very impressed with that. £39.98. And I think that is brilliant. So that's from JMP. Hmm. Battery monitor too. Marvellous. Another gadget for the man or woman in your life that has everything. I think it's pretty essential, that. I like that. That's yeah, I really do. really do like that. Right, that brings us nicely onto something else that's battery orientated, and that is... Ah, oh, yes. Let's get this out of the way. And these. <laughs> and move on to this. <laughs> An Oxford high output USB charger. Now, 
you've seen USB chargers on a lot, but this is a high output one. And what is the advantage of that? Uh, it means you can charge things slightly faster or use slightly more power demanding products because this will supply you with 2.1 amps rather than less. 1.9 or something, isn't it? Or yeah, like whatever they are. Yeah. yeah, and that extra 0.2 makes a big difference because it's the difference between charging a Nokia 3310 or an iPhone. OK. <laughs> Possibly. But yeah, I mean, you can power your sat-nav and charge it at the same time and it will, it will give it enough power to do that. Exactly. And, of course, it's made by Oxford, so it's a quality product. It's not one of these that you can buy on eBay. And let's be honest, you can get them cheaper, but a lot of them are a bit flimsy. They're not really waterproof and they're just a bit crap. Yeah. So it's always good to go for a quality product, especially if you've got a decent bike or you don't want anything to melt or get hot on your bike. That's got a good quality, uh, like a bullet connector type setup to plug it in and everything, so it's nice. It has, Oxford has that same sort of um, male, female, vice versa connector thing, mm -hmm. which is always waterproof. Very good. And what is the price of that, Malcolm? What I do wonder, before I get to that, okay, um, is, whether or not you can use the same connector that you can connect your charger to to use you, this, and then you can just pop this out and put your, your optimizer on. Ah, yes. I think you do, because they look the same. Because it goes directly to the battery, doesn't Tell it? Tell you what, let's open it up and find out. Hmm. Well, what is the price? The price is $24.99. So not bad. No. Yes, it is. Same. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. you could probably just pop the plug off the back of that and connect your optimizer to it, so that's one less thing you need connected to your battery. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Excellent. Very good. Right, and that will bring us on to our final product. And our final product is this. Now, to you and me, that's a battery charger. And yes, it is a battery charger. However, tell them what's so special about it whilst I put this away. It is a optimizing battery charger. But it's also a quite a high output, that's 8 amps I can provide, which is generally what you would charge a fair sized car battery with. Yeah. So it will do most things. It's also good for lithium batteries, which is handy to have in today's technological market because uh, things are starting to appear with lithium batteries and you can't just use an ordinary battery charger on a lithium battery, it will not work properly. No, it won't. Um, right, now, we do have a lithium battery here, which is actually dead. I don't even know if it will take charge, because this particular battery requires waking. It does. So we are going um, to test this with that charger. If not, we're also going to stick it on there. One of the hmm. biggest things that they say with this is that it will charge a battery in five minutes. A lithium battery? Yes, hmm. five minutes. Five. That's pretty quick. Right, can we get the uh, multi voltimeter thingy? multi voltimeter thingy. Yes, and just to see if there's anything in that. It should say 0.3 volts or something. Now, because it's asleep. Whilst he's doing that, let us get out what you get in the box. You get a Sorry. charger. With the connectors and the plug, you also get your crocodile clips, like so, and your inline um, plug-on thing, like you do with all the others. And it's got a very stiff connector, which looks to me to be the same as the Oxford one, is it? No, it's not. Bigger. Slightly bigger. So you can't put your Oxford one in there. It's a slightly different size. That corner of the market on that one, aren't they? Hmm. Right. Okay. So. Where's your app? Oh, me app. If it's not updating, there's not enough power in this thing to switch it on. No, it's not. All right. What was your voltmeter thing? Why can't you test it with that? I can, and it will say. Something like 0 0.03 or really something like that because this battery requires waking up when it's down, so 0 0.07. That's 0 0.07. So it's not so much that it's got no power in it, it's that it's, it's got a circuit in there that switches it off. So that's what this wire is for. The, the, on the particular bike that this is for, it has a button that you press 
to wake the battery up. That function didn't work because the battery was dead. Okay. So it's possible that the lithium cell in this is entirely discharged and therefore completely dead and won't charge. At this moment in time, we do not have a lithium battery to test it on because they're not cheap and we haven't got a spare one. Really sorry. But, like I said, apparently five minutes to charge one. What about charging a normal battery? Let's give it a whirl. Should we reconnect the doodah? Let's reconnect the doodah. Okay, so you get a digital display, which obviously is not plugged into anything, so you're not really going to see anything at this moment in time. No, and that's displaying a current setting, which is in this case two amps. Yeah. And that the zero volts is there. And it's also saying what type of battery. It's sort of standard and lithium it will change to if you plug it into a lithium. So what happens if you charge a standard battery at 8 amps? Uh, one of these, mm -hmm. it may well overheat it and buckle the lead plates inside and all the rest of it. So it should automatically select a safe thing for that type of battery. Okay. That is on. All right, are we ready? Mm-hmm. Right. So 7.8 volts. 7.8 volts. Correct. Yeah. Status charging. There he goes. It's charging 14.9 volts. There you go. So it's stayed in the 2 amp range. It's given us a status indicator at the bottom there flashing away and also right. the flashy light. So green flashy light means whatever it says in the uh, destructions over there. Presumably charging, but it might have different stages. 14.9. That's pretty good. Mm. So obviously that battery is completely dead, so it's pumping some power in for us. Yeah. But it's charging. Oh, there's lots of things to read. Just read it. Uh, on the back here, you get a graph that um, explains how it all works. Look. Can you tell you what the LEDs do? Um, probably. But um, they can read all that. They don't need to know all that. Well, they can, but if you tell them about the product, it would be quite nice to tell them if it's doing a save function or whether it's just doing a full-on charge. Where's the LEDs? I'm not quite sure what the purpose of all these little um, flashy lines are. What's that all about? Um, but, well, that's showing you... Um, like the charging cycle, so it'll be doing like a pulsing charge at the beginning there, then it'll set a voltage and it'll hold it and then it'll drop off and do a trickle and then it'll do a trickle stage and then it'll do another pulsing stage. It can kind of conditions the plates in there. Okay. So that's the idea of conditioning batteries, is it... I don't know whether it deoxidizes the plates or whatever, but it's uh, something to do with that. Well, what it does do is it diagnoses, di diagnoses, which is like diagnosing, but slightly slower. Yeah. Um, it has repair mode, so it um, doesn't fix the battery if it's broken. What I mean is it repairs the cells. Yeah, so it saves uh, it, yeah. yeah. Um, it does the initial charge. It has a bulk charge, absorption charge, which is a constant voltage charge. Mm -hmm. um, it optimises the battery, so if it, um, if it drops below a certain level, it will keep it topped up. So you can stick it on and leave it on your bike, and you haven't got to worry about it um, discharging in any way. It'll just top it up and optimise the battery if it needs to. Um, then it'll diagnose it at float. What does that mean? Trickle charge with constant voltage, yeah. maximum four hours. Okay, and a trickle mode, so you can just have a permanent trickle charge if you want to. All right. Now this, as I say, if you want the eight amp function, which is uh, quite rare, to be honest, without spending four and a half billion pounds. It's uh, just before we get onto that, it automatically selects between 2 amp and 8 amp depending on the size of the battery. So a 50 amp hour to 160 amp hour battery, it will choose 8 amps. And then 5 to 50 amp hours, this one's a 5.7, it automatically selects the 2 amp charge. Okay. And the green flashy light just means it's charging. Okay. So what's the biggest draw on this? The fact that it's 8 amps. Yep. Do you, do you see what I did there? Biggest draw. Very good. Well done. Electrical currents and all yeah. that. See, I know stuff. Okay, so the price off this is $84.99. Very good. 85 quid for an 8 amp charger. That's pretty good, that. Yeah, it's so impressive. You can see the voltage is dropping off now and doing things because it's uh, yeah. working through its cycle. Okay, so there you go. That's all we've got for this product review. If you've got any of these things, or if you want any of these things, let us know. If you've got any of these things, let us know. Are they any good? Do you have an 8 amp charger? Is it worth the money? And that 
brings us to the end of this episode of Motors for the Masses. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back next week with lots of other stuff. We've also got Project Mac coming up. We're back on the Mustang again soon. We're going to be hopefully getting that engine in pretty soon. Mm. Indeed. We can certainly sort out the small areas of rot that we've come across. Oh, yeah, we've got lots of welding and rust beating and all that kind of stuff happening. We say lots, there's not that much. There's three areas that Some. need our attention okay. on the front end, so it's yeah. not that bad. Uh, before we go, don't forget, we are going to be at Motorcycle Live on the 24th of November, Hall 4, Stand 4, E05. That is the social hub. We'll be there if you want to come along and say hello or just have a chat or anything else. Um, there's also going to be some motorbikes there. Lots of them, because it's Motorcycle Live. Yeah, it's funny, that, isn't it? Yeah. Um, we're going to be there on Saturday the 23rd as well, just doing yeah, some filming and having a look and talking to various people and meeting some of the suppliers. So, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Um, we'll be back, as I say, very soon with lots of other stuff. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. And don't forget, winners of these mugs, you'll be receiving these soon. Thank you very much for all your support. A massive thank you to our patrons. Thank you very much indeed. And we are going to be back on Project Bob very soon too. And talking of patrons, you'll find a link to the patrons below the video and also on our webpage. And there's also a link to our store on Facebook where you can buy t-shirts and mugs and stickers and, and kind of hoodies that sort of and stuff. mugs and key rings and stuff like that. Yeah. Yes. And also we've got a giveaway coming up soon. We are over 18,000 subscribers and we're going to be knocking on the door of 20,000 subscribers very soon. So please help us get up to that 20,000 mark. And there's another giveaway coming to celebrate that. Ooh, so what they are going to give away? Well, they'll find mm. out when they get nearer the time. Don't tell them now. They might not like it. And then they go, no, forget it. <laughs> I might say that <laughs> at the time. So <laughs> that's it. Until next time, please ride and drive carefully. But have fun. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>